A certain female householder was the patron of an ascetic, who lived nearby. The ascetic went about naked, as he was part of a religious order that prescribed nakedness. The woman meanwhile looked after the ascetic with loving care, as if he was her own child. The woman, one day, heard people in her neighborhood talk about the Buddha. They gushed how impressive his sermons were, and what they realized after listening to him. The woman, hearing these accounts of the Buddha, wanted to go see the Buddha herself. However, there was a problem. The naked ascetic was her teacher, and she had to take his consent in order to go see the Buddha, who was a teacher of a different religious order. Knowing this, the woman went and met the ascetic to get his approval. The ascetic listened as the woman conveyed her request to go see the Buddha. Don't go, said the ascetic once the woman had voiced her desire. It was clear that the ascetic did not want his patron going to some other teacher. However, since the woman was by then quite intent on seeing the Buddha, she devised a plan. Strictly speaking, the ascetic only forbade the woman going to the Buddha. But he did not exactly declare that the Buddha could not come and see her. So summoning her son, she asked the boy to go meet the Buddha, in order to invite him the next day for arms in her house. And so the boy set out to the monastery in the city where the Buddha lived at the time. However, the boy, before going to meet the Buddha, decided to take a detour to meet the naked ascetic first. The ascetic, Hearing the news of the errand the boy was running for his mother, said, Don't go. But, I am afraid that my mother would scold me if I did not, said the boy. So I will go. The ascetic thought for a while. You can go. However, when you meet the Buddha, do not tell him where you live. And when you return, Exit the temple in such a way that the Buddha would think you live in different part of the city. And once the Buddha could not find your house tomorrow, you and I can eat all the good food that your mother would have made for him, said the ascetic cunningly. I will do that, said the boy, and took leave of the ascetic. The boy went to the Buddha's monastery, and conveyed his mother's message. The Buddha accepted the invitation in silence. And as soon as he did so, the boy ran away, not telling the Buddha where he lived, and true to his word to the naked ascetic. The next morning, the Buddha got ready to go for his arms. However, the Buddha was psychic, and did not need directions from anyone to go where he wanted to be. So the Buddha set out, and duly arrived at the house of the woman, who was eagerly awaiting his arrival. By this time, however, the naked ascetic has also come to the house of the woman, and stayed in a back room, to see for himself what would transpire, and of course, to partake of a good meal intended for the Buddha. The woman invited the Buddha into her house, and presented him with the choicest of food she had prepared. After the meals, the Buddha delivered a sermon for the gathering. Once the sermon was over, the woman was highly impressed. She then applauded the Buddha, saying, Well said, well said. Hearing these words, the naked ascetic could no longer contain himself. His plan has failed, and on top of that, his own patron was applauding some other mendicant. He came out of the back room and into where the Buddha and the gathering were, and scolding them with the choicest of insults he could think of went away. The Buddha, meanwhile, stayed unbothered. The woman was, however, disturbed and humiliated. Seeing that, the Buddha advised her that it is her own sins of commission, or omission that she ought to mind, and not that of others.